The next speaker is Roberto Nehon. Uh, he is a former member of the Brazilian uh, national rowing team as a lightweight rower, but more important at this moment is uh, he is also member of the Para Rowing Commission of FISA, and besides that he's scientific, scientific chief of the Brazilian Olympic Labor Laboratory and chief medical officer. officer. Um, he is going to tell us about the Brazilian sports technology and uh, how they use it in para rowing. Roberto. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, now I have no excuse. Okay, uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, we have almost 20 minutes to discuss uh, these two little different and difficult subjects because if you talk about technology, we can fit uh, everything under this umbrella and in the world of technology and sports, it's also difficult to know exactly what it means. But if you want to fit Brazilian technology, Brazilian sports technology, and there is uh, the international patent number of the Brazil uh, sports technology that you can fit. I'm not talking about rowing. If I'm talking about rowing, that's probably the number zero. If I'm talking about the power rowing, there's a possible to have number less than zero, but probably this is the point. And how I can pass you an idea, and I'm here to share things with you. There's my difficult uh, challenge here today. And uh, what I will share is one idea. It is the Brazilian Olympic Laboratory. And it's important to know the Brazilian Olympic Lab is different and the Brazilian uh, Olympic is a different institution of the Brazilian Paralympic. But we had exactly the same, the same problem at the, after the Olympics. What we can do with the legends, uh, we receive a lot of things then we solve this problem by side of the Olympics, then I can share it and I can fit some things in the lab and power sports, power rowing is, is one of them. Then I will first uh, present to you what is Brazilian sports technology. Uh, we work on that at this moment. There is a Brazilian uh, training uh, center in Maria Lenk. It is uh, the aquatic center for polo and mm -hmm. jump during the games and we manage a lot of athletes at this moment there. It was there a lab but there is no coach using uh, that lab since uh, 2007, March of 2007 and we were asked why, what's happening. Probably the big deal is for coach, they were looking just for uh, uh, it is necessary to be there, yes, it's mandatory for us a pre-participation examination. And after, I have no idea why I will be there, and we try to change this. Then we have uh, a lot of different type of evaluation, biomechanical is one of them, and we have a lot of in-field evaluation using accelerometry, using uh, technology, uh, we don't have a lot of money and Brazil is passed, just passed with a very, very hard uh, economical situation. Then we can use non-standard uh, um, machines or devices, but we can get exactly the same data. And there is a traditional flow that we receive it in uh, just after the games. And all you are familiarized with this kind of flow when approach a PhD student or a traditional lab, look, uh, can I test your athletes? Or can you be here for a thesis, for a PG, uh, PhD thesis or something like that? And okay, some, sometimes you can collaborate. Uh, science goes in this way long, long. But as Connie said, where are the questions? And there is a big deal. Uh, when we don't know where are the questions, we have no idea what uh, our team, what your team, I'm not a coach, I'm a medical doctor, what your team are doing there. Then we thought about our flow. We we not there to change the equipment. There's a lot of money there. They're not there to change the people. There's a very capable uh, scientist in that lab. But we changed the flow 
we put exactly the same idea that Connie just said. We came to the coach and please let me know about you. What are you asking about your athletes? What are you looking for? Then we have a completely, completely individual uh, flow and answer uh, point by point. Sure that if you look us, it's exactly the same lab that you can find anywhere in any university. There is nothing very, very special. There is a lot of high technology. We can use the field. The field is wonderful. The facilities, they come from the games. But we have a lot of things that we can work on the field, on water. There is canyon, but for rowing, exactly the same. And after that, we work on a concept. There is a sportomic concept. There is uh, exactly the concept that we will not interfere in uh, training for science. We will focus our scientists in during the training time, during the competition. We, will, we can, we the scientists can fit us there because we are working with a very, very uh, special population. That's the idea. There's one of the papers uh, about this idea. And there's a typical uh, experiment, a typical uh, two-day experiment that we have exactly the normal uh, day of training or uh, test or something. Then we put things up this idea. And how we can have science with this? At the same uh, way that hospitals have science, we are not uh, many times uh, capable to have a patients and pick up these patients. We just receive and treat these patients and then we have secondary data. But to work with a secondary data is very, very difficult. To work with a secondary data uh, with a performance is even harder. Then we have engineers uh, and people to work with data, but we work with a secondary data in a kind of data lake and then we have science and it's good. Then we can get a lot of raw data and delivery in so many different ways, but delivery uh, the answer for the questions for the coach. That is the idea. And I'm just showing uh, what came from that. And it doesn't matter what, but we're just showing that you can filter that data and answer that questions. Okay, now let's back for the subject. Let's back toward how uh, can we use the same process in other areas? Brazil Olympic Committee and Paralympic Committee are different committees. and. Uh, uh, Olympic lab is open for any field of research in sports. Then yes, we can work together. We have some uh, work with the Brazilian Paralympic Committee, and we can use this, our skills to understand classification. Yes, why not? We have a lot of data analysis. We have a mathematical modeling. I will talk about it in a minute. And we have a little uh, biomechanical knowledge. Why not use this for uh, para rowing? Okay, then let's back for the uh, our experience in rowing, our experience in uh, biomechanical and rowing. Since 2010, we have a line, a research uh, pathway on this, and we developed this uh, after four years, but it came for something like that. It's a computer inside a box and we are trying to develop that, that this box after in a PhD engineer, bioengineering student and we are able at that time to acquire this kind of data and after some mathematics and engineering stuff uh, we, are, we were able to yes in 2011, 2012 to have uh, with pre precision a lot of um, Sam, uh, we found sample a lot of uh, data and we can have this at that time. Okay, just to know how the, our device gave us the sign, it was something like that, but after a little treatment we can have exactly the same thing that the commercial device that we can find. Okay, and after the second PhD student just uh, show us and what is most important for, again, our club, our uh, national level athletes, we're not talking about the uh, international level athletes, but we're trying to find the most important thing for the boat. That's for sure not uh, time is the aim, 
But okay, how some things can interfere more than others? And there's uh, mathematical modeling, and it's very interesting to them to, okay, I can show you the obvious, but for the mathematical modeling, sometimes there is the aim for them. And sorry, there is in Portuguese, I just realized it now, but there is the uh, energy that uh, is put on the system and, and work against the, the movement. Okay, it's a kind of break, uh, energy to break the boat. That's probably the, boat, the best uh, translation for frenage in English. And uh, uh, probably the worst uh, results was uh, w w they were in the, ba the bigger frenage number. Okay, let's uh, put it in more data and let's think about uh, stroke per minute and that number and stroke per minute thinking about the same idea for sure it go uh, bigger and bigger but uh, there is a number that okay there is much more efficient in 2008 than uh, 32 and uh, we can give an idea it was with one uh, light uh, rower, female light rower who were in, were in our club at that moment. Okay, then finished 2010 acquisition, our strange device that was thing that we were able to have, that is original uh, technology, and we changed it for uh, 2011, 2012 for portable things and more device. Our motherboard was a uh, very, very tiny motherboard, but after it's a good enough motherboard. And we changed it just to show you the sizes, the difference of a, a notebook than a data logger. There is a data logger, there is a notebook, just to show you the difference to care a notebook in a boat or a data logger. And in 2013, it was finishing this uh, PhD uh, tease. And, and at that time, uh, the device was able to catch all the things that uh, probably the uh, brand new one that we can buy anywhere, we are able to have it. And the aim for the engineer is never to have something to sell all around the world, just to prove that it's possible to have the same thing. And there's the end of it ends in 2013. Okay, it means since 2010 to 2014 we have two PhD, uh, one master degree and some uh, students engaged on that, but finished, finished in 2014. And just now, in 2017, we had the opportunity to have a partnership uh, with uh, another training center again in the uh, Legans, inside the Legans of the Olympic Games, uh, and it is in the end of uh, the venue, the rowing venue, is just there. It's the end end, and it's just here. And uh, then we can put it under that crazy hat that we can put together, work together, and how we can put it on the Paralympic uh, world, on the Paralympic movement, to try to figure out how can we uh, work with based, scientific based evidence for classification? There is the big question now. Okay, now let's go to the our question. Now we are asking exactly the same idea for the Olympic lab that any coach can ask. And can we understand the VI impact for power rowing? What to measure is the first question, but how to measure is the next question. Then we are able to measure everything, yes, but we are unable to uh, analyze every data. There is really, really impossible. Okay, we have a lot of device. We have, uh, we are capable to take a lot of measures. And we try to start with the a range of, uh, of uh, one row. It means if we're talking about the uh, visual impairment, there is uh, three different classes. And one idea to uh, focus the cap uh, if you're capable or not to recognize things, and if you're capable or not to have all the field of vision, then let's think about, let's make it as simple as possible. And let's think about the degrees 
doesn't matter exactly these numbers, just to understand. And okay, if someone is moved here, let's think about the degrees. So you're able not to uh, have a vision of the blade, have a vision of the, all the, your bolt. Can it interfere or not? First of all, we have no idea if it interferes or not. And second, uh, maybe it's much more difficult to know about all the coaches, all the uh, people have knowledge about it, the idea from them, if it interferes or not, then just take a measure. Then we stop it a little bit. That, that it was our first approach. Uh, field of vision uh, can be the point. Yes, it can be. But maybe you can be the effect on this. Then we stop it on this and we uh, think about the synchronism. Why? If you remember from uh, a lot of data, probably the synchronism is the uh, worst or best thing for acceleration or deacceleration or frenage. Then if you can choose just one data to make this analysis, synchronism is uh, the first one. Okay, and makes little sense because for visual impairment, probably synchronism is one of the uh, things that we can look and just after have an analysis. Okay, we have some data of synchronism. We're not working eight, we're working in four, it's just a picture. Um, and we can have a lot of mathematical modeling to understand that the synchronism and probably to uh, take an inference uh, how about this it can interfere the speed on a boat and I have a lot of mathematics on that and when I say a lot of mathematics, the specific mathematics it came from these PhD students and uh, we can have multiple regression with a lot of data inside and we can determine the verb, the verb variables that are important to uh, this kind of training and the influence on the boat speed after all we're looking for the boat speed and the efficient we can also take a look uh, having this data to investigate the influence of one variable to another there is uh, the easiest way the fastest way if you want to change something uh, from 2020 on we must be fast and uh, we have some data, some results that yes, the problem with uh, synchronism can have a clear interference in more than others that don't have a lot of interference. We can say in block are the, the with a significance uh, with p less than 0.05. I know that p is not the only mathematical uh, point, but it's enough for us. Again, there is uh, with a partial reg regression, then probably synchronism is one of thing, and we keep mesh taking measure for other points, and that thing, yeah, that yes, we can measure. And the ideal protocol is rowers with uh, visual impairment, with at least two years training with biomechanical equipment, to not have at the time of the. Uh, test any interference with the equipment itself. Takes measures boat speed, stroke rate, acceleration, a lot of things. We focus first on the synchronous, but to take measures of everything. Then the engineers can uh, give us secondary data and information, but we have not enough rowers, uh, VI rowers, not even rowers in Brazil to keep it working. Then we had this protocol. We just have regular rowers, uh, national, regional uh, level rowers. They have, okay, at least two years and, and with experience. And we just cover eyes uh, one by one, changing uh, the position of this one by one and give them enough time to row. Okay, it's not bad. We can work with this. There is the, a simple protocol. It's, uh, it's not uh, expensive. And uh, we can have it four times, doesn't matter, we just can swap. Uh, sometimes we start with number one, number two, number three, or number five, doesn't matter at all. There's a very, very easy protocol. There's not so difficult to understand, but, oops, okay. But we're looking for uh, rovers with VI all around the world. We're here to discuss with you, because there is a lot of bias uh, using VI volunteers. We can prove the concept. 
for the actual student is very very good to him to have a thesis but probably there's not good enough to change things then first of all yes we can do it uh, in Brazil we can manage the data we can work with you we, we are open to discuss this pilot student study but we're really looking for probably that is fair enough to have uh, all the visual disabilities uh, uh, acceptable for parrowing and the position maybe can interfere or not. And there is our research. The idea is, okay, please uh, think about if we can work together, we can uh, send you a sheet and please just fill the blanks and you can analyze everything. On, on the other hand, we can also work together. And the answer is a multi-centric research. It is uh, my opinion after six months working on that. It is possible, it's not difficult, it's not expensive. We can also work with a national or um, regional level. But I'm here open that I could be wrong. I think that we are doing just because we need to collaborate with the rowing community. I think this is it. I hope that I it fits on 15 minutes, but I still open for questions. Thank you very much. Um, any questions for Roberto? About Brazilian technology and para rowing. Rosie. Thank you very much for It's uh, off. Come here. Like to show that synchronicity is a problem for the eye No, I'm not sure like that. Probably yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Look, like a scientist, there's n there's no binary answer, but yes, probably synchronism is the worst case. But what you're really saying is you'd like to have some data in people's groups to have the eye athletes to try and show when it's true. If we, if uh, people can have this protocol as an ideal protocol it's wonderful we can help to how to manage it and in case of it's impossible I don't have enough this protocol is also easy because that you can put in any club there is the idea was clear okay sorry for my crazy almost English one last question. I think everyone is ready for dinner then. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. And we start tomorrow at 8.30. Good. Have a nice evening. <laughs>